Hi folks, it's Steve here from Analytics Action. What I want to do today is give you a demo on how to create tabular models in SQL Server Analysis Services 2012. So I'll talk about four things. Um, first of all, I will um, talk about what are tabular models, then the steps to building a, t um, a model, then I'll go through a live demo and then uh, wrap up with some, uh, give you an overview of some additional resources you may find useful. So what are tabular models? Essentially, uh, a tabular model in uh, SQL Server Analysis Services is an analytics engine that allows you to slice and dice large volumes of data. Um, the data uh, can then be viewed through a browsing tool such as um, Excel, which is probably the most common one, um, or you know, other tools like SQL Reporting Services. The bonus with tabular models is they're a lot more it's a lot quicker and more intuitive to build than, say, the traditional OLAP models, which um, the majority of data warehouses have um, have been built on. Um, tablet models are great because they are high performance. So a couple, there's a couple um, reasons for that. They use in-memory column store databases or column store uh, indexes, um, and then also the language which is used um, with the, to build. Um, Tabular models is optimized for multi-core processes, which is where sort of processing is going. Um, the bonus is when you compare these to say um, Microsoft's first sort of foray into tabular models, which was um, Power Pivots. Um, the bonus with um, building these enterprise-level tabular models and SQL Server analysis services is that there's no data storage limits. So Power Pivots have a data um, storage limit of about two gigabytes. Um, the other bonus is you can apply a lot more, again, enterprise level security. So for example, um, if a sales rep should only see um, data for the, say, resellers that they're managing, you can do that within, um, within analysis services. You can't do that within PowerPivot. And then also the um, you can, these models can also be low latency, so you can have data being refreshed very, very um, quickly, um, which again is a little bit more um, tricky to to manage, or not very, I want to say, feature rich within uh, within Power Pivots. You can also do selective data uh, refreshes. So if you've got a, a you know a data warehouse with say five years of data and you need to refresh your tabular model say once a week you don't have to pull that whole five years of data and you can just pull in the data for the last week okay so building tabular models it's pretty simple um, so all you need to do is create a um, SQL Server Analysis Services tabular model that's really just the envelope which the model gets built in you import the data in so you can either just bring it in as a single table or a um, star format um, sort of table um, and then you just really after that you create the groupings for the measures so these are things like sums all the aggregates really you know sums averages um, for the various measures that you want then you just deploy the model and analyze um, you there's also what i've found is it's it do also get um, a few errors thrown up when building um, tablet models so i'll also um, talk a little bit about um, error handling as well okay so I'll just go through the live demo so I'll spark up um, Visual Studio which is the same thing as the old business intelligence uh, development studio and actually now has been renamed again SQL Server data tools I think is the is what it's called um, sort of I wish Microsoft wouldn't keep on renaming um, renaming um, its you know all of the various products. It does get a little bit confusion confusing. Um, yeah, SQL Server Data Tools. So essentially, it's Visual Studio, which is the development environment. So first of all, we create a new project. We've got the choice of what sort of projects to create here. So we're going to create an analysis uh, services project, and it's going to be this one here. So we can also import data from, you know, say Power Pivots when if they if it looks like your Power Pivot model is going to get um, grow larger than um, than that two gigabytes. But we'll just create one from scratch today. So we'll just go um, tab. Um, tab demo um, we're going to 
there that'll do so this will then just create this has just created this um, this shell of a project so now we need to um, bring data in so we're going to pull it in from say SQL server but you can pull it as you can see here you can pull it through from a range of different um, data sources my server name is just the name of just click on that to select your server name mine is just ThinkPad the database name just going to be Sandbox2 uh, Windows username so this is just again just a level of security that we need to go through so this is just my standard login here um, that's my password next okay so now we can either select a subset of the uh, of the table or um, just pull in the whole table um, for this demo I'll just pull in all of the data in the table so it's just um, this is Australian Bureau of Statistics data and it's on uh, the number of businesses um, and I've got something like 20 years of data so I've got about 3 million rows of data there um, don't look don't worry too much about the actual what the what the data says it's what I want to do is just really just demonstrate the process um, of creating a model today so close that so now it's just pulled through a whole heap of data so it's really just the industry um, so a detailed um, this is some geography information again state business size and then number of number of businesses so what we can do um, unlike power pivots what you need to do is you need to what they call explicitly define your um, the level of aggregation or the, or the measures so what we're going to do today is just do a ver one very simple um, DAX expression um, you're going to click on the number of businesses go column auto sum there we go we're going to create a sum so this is just a, a DAX um, DAX calculation this is the uh, the language in which um, is used in tabular models so that's all very good I'm just going to save that and then I'm going to deploy the model so I'm just going to deploy it so that then makes the um, makes the model accessible to um, you know to say other employees within the business so normally you'd deploy that say from the development environment onto say another dedicated um, tabular um, tabular server so that's done and now we'll just jump across and analyze this in our um, in our browser so which we're going to do this in Excel so it'll spark up Excel here we go so we've got this measure we created we're going to have that in values and we're going to have say um, industry there um, like I'm saying don't pay too much attention to this because this is data over 20 years so it, um, I haven't I haven't bought year information in but let's just turn this into a, um, into a percentage of grand total so this is the distribution of of businesses by the various industries I'm just gonna throw a slicer in there as well just to show you how quickly the data can be sliced and diced so what you can do is just click on you know whatever state you want and you see this is slicing the, and dicing the data very very quickly and that's because of the um, you know the uh, the DAX language and the um, in memory storage so this is all very cool so this is how the end users can interact with your um, tabular model that you've built in analysis services so that is it um, going forward I'll try and do some um, I'll do some more in-depth um, uh, tutorials on um, tabular models because there's you could it gets you know it gets a lot more complex particularly around the DAX, the DAX language side of things and also managing security and data refreshes so I hope to do a little bit of work uh, some more tutorials on that in the future okay I mentioned earlier on that um, you most likely will have to deal with a few errors um, when you try and build these tabular models um, and I definitely definitely struck quite a few sort of um, situations where I need to, needed to troubleshoot some problems so what I suggest um, 
for you to do that, um, if you don't have too much experience with um, troubleshooting um, sort of software issues, um, go to my website analyticsinaction.com, click on resources and have a look at this um, video here um, entitled uh, Simple Framework to Solve Technical Problems and that'll basically show you how to um, sort out any sort of sort of technical issues that you um, run um, come across so um, you should find that pretty useful so that is pretty much um, the, the um, demonstration so um, what might be useful for you too is if you um, want to learn more about SQL Server um, analysis services integration services reporting services and all sorts of other BI tools you could come across to my website analyticsinaction.com the other option is to subscribe to my um, my YouTube um, video so just um, click on the um, subscribe button um, so just um, above the above the video and um, every time I produce another video you'll get an update um, so hope um, hope this was um, useful today and like I say come across to the website and um, and uh, look at some of the other um, uh, information that I have there